Welcome back all, this is Daz from Motoro Techniques. So up this week I am looking at flicker free lighting. This is about the fourth take I've done this and that's the first time I've actually set it properly. So we digress. Um, so what is flicker free lighting? So you might have had some issues with your rolling stock or so your coaches and guards vans or caboose uh, with the lighting flickering due to various things. Could be dirty track, dirty wheels, dirty pickups. Um, just sometimes you can't eliminate that just purely because of geometry of the track and also what we're trying to do is trying to get as much pressure down on the track as we can to have a good conductivity and obviously the weight of these items are prohibitive to to do that so what flicker free is it's like a almost like a little battery backup system on to prevent it from flickering or least big shout out to my people out there have helped me out with buy me a coffee or buy me a beer Every little bit counts and I am eternally grateful for these people for helping me with my journey on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. So let's get into it. So my journey within flicker-free lighting started with a circuit made by a US model I found online. His name is Jim Betts. So initially, this is the up on the screen here is the, the circuit that he has designed. So it can either be used uh, DC or DCC. So it comes in via the bridge rectifier here. So with this, this type of circuit, there's a myriad of ways to install the pickups for the lights. And obviously this is a little bit beyond the scope of what this video is going to be about. That could be a whole another video in itself. I did try this circuit with the incandescent lights, but obviously due to their, their high current draw, you need a much higher um, valued capacitor, maybe a one farad supercapacitor or something similar, which then obviously starts getting rather large. I did find that uh, using this this circuit on DC is non-polarity dependent. So if you're requiring some sort of directional lighting on the guards van or something similar or a caboose, um, you have to have uh, sort out some sort of switching to to get it to do that. Using the uh, the high intensity LEDs were just a little bit too bright. So you obviously have to use some sort of dropping resistor. So this is resistor. R2 and R3, so the dropping resistor there. So I sort of went through a, a myriad of other ones and I sort of settled on a 1000 um, ohm or 1K. And using this, uh, this value of resistor gave me a good intensity. So obviously the, the way this works, the, the lower the current that's being consumed by the rest of the, the lighting circuit, the, the less flicker that you're going to get effectively. So this is the current circuit that I've been um, experimenting with and I will show you actually in one-to-one -one, um, exactly how it works and it looks very similar to this on the breadboard. So the one issue with the, the last circuit that I was showing you by Jim from the United States sort of worked okay with the guards van side of things because it's got less LEDs but as soon as you sort of went to six or seven LEDs we still started having continual dimming uh, just due to the, the way the, the circuit is designed, um, which sort of came across and looked a little bit like flickering. So a very, very quick overview how this circuit works. So, so basically we go through the bridge rectifier, which is this component here. So we've got the DCC coming in both sides. So we will just refer to the DCC. So that's our input. And then basically what happens from there so we're looking at um, sort of 12 to 14 volts depending on what get which uh, scale that you're running so then what that does that will then in turn charge up the capacitor which then powers up the 5 volt volt uh, voltage regulator so that th then will give us a constant 5 volt output so also when we do get a loss of uh, loss of power uh, dirty track pickups or the like to that normally would flicker our lights this is where the capacitor will then continue to keep that that, that constant five volts on um, the voltage regulator here to to fire up our leds so in this video i was planning on actually building the actual uh, light board proper 
Um, but at this point in time, um, my shipment out of China hasn't arrived. So I, I was just going to do it with some very board, which is basically just a the next step on from the, the breadboard. Uh, but obviously you just solder to it, not just push it in there. So let's go over to the workbench and we'll show you what this is all about. So before we go across to the workbench, how, how about we go across to my sponsor PCB Way and have a look at some of their offerings. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or advanced electrical engineer, you need to check out PCB Way, or you are seriously missing out. They are passionate about PCBs, ranging from standard to advanced PCBs with one to 30 layers with full featured printed circuit boards. PCB Way don't stop there. They offer basically everything you need to make your ideas a reality. Whether you need 3D prints, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing, they can do it all for highly competitive prices. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. Watch out for my upcoming videos where I'll be using some of their products. So what we're going to quickly look at is firstly what components we're going to need. So all the way down here, we've got the uh, the bridge rectifier, which is edit ZR1304 or a smaller one, which is ZR1308. And then we've got uh, the C1, the capacitor number one um, microfarad. It's got to be 16 volt electrolytic or larger. So I've got 470 microfarad. And then we've got the five volt voltage regulator so let's just uh, we've got the two dcc cables coming in we'll just turn the circuit on and i'll just let the the capacitor charge itself up a few moments later so what i'll do this so this is emulating the track power so what i'll do i'll end up taking one of these off and you can sort of see it takes you know half a second to a second for it to totally um, extinguish the the lights or LEDs. So what we'll quickly do, we'll just quickly turn the power off at the command station. So a little experiment that I, I did try is just adding a few more of these. Now this is obviously going to come to how much space you've got. Let's just try a few more. And then I'm going to turn, so that's three capacitors and my breadboard's just having a little bit of a conniption. All right, so I'll just let that energize for a few moments. A few moments later. All right, so hopefully that should be enough to energize it properly. So what we'll do, we'll just disconnect. And you can see that probably with three of them, it, it probably over doubles the amount of time. Uh, it takes to discharge the the LED. So obviously, the more you have, the more power you're going to need here. There's obviously this is not a very efficient circuit either, just because of the breadboard. Obviously, there'd be probably be a little bit of a voltage leakage there. You can sort of see how effective this this little circuit is. It's a very uh, cheap uh, circuit. It's only a few dollars to put it together. It's just a matter of getting different um, different capacitors. Maybe a higher, a higher quality, so higher value capacitor just acts as a bigger battery. And also, the issue is depending on the size of your coaches, where you're actually going to put these little guys, because that would have to be on um, individual light boards. So, one thing I need to just quickly touch on regarding the capacitor here. So, if you go above one microfarad, you're going to need some sort of current limiter. So I'll try to quickly explain the current limiter, and I'm sorry I don't have a, a diagram of that, but so that's installed to eliminate what they call the inrush current. So what happens with inrush current is tripping the actually trips the DCC booster and its eternal circuit breaker, which normally happens at the power up of your system or after a short circuit. So the limiter will comprise of around a one amp diode and also some sort of uh, resistor, low value resistor, probably between 150, 200. And they're wired within parallel. So they will fit between uh, in the bridge rectifier, sort of in this section here of the, the positive 
uh, outlet, and the other end of the diode will go to the positive of. So the positive of the the bridge rectifier will go to the positive of the uh, capacitor here. So that's a very very crude way of looking at how we we eliminate the 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 inrush current. So that's the end of, the, of this video. Just a very short, sharp, shiny one. Sorry, the, the quality of the footage wasn't uh, fantastic. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, so the questions are, was this the sort of thing you would use or do you have a better circuit out there that is either easier or smaller and uh, comes up with a um, better outcome? So I'm very interested in what people are doing here. So make sure you make comments below. So don't forget to subscribe, like, click that little bell icon and also consider to buy me a coffee or a beer, depending on what part of the world from, as I said, any little bit counts. I'm just trying to upscale my microphones and the like to, to get better sound quality going. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques.